there's an article out in the New York Times this morning that is talking about how all the doctors in this country are now writing their wills and possibly having to change it because the people they're close to are either too old or fellow doctors and they may die. There's hospital physicians that have resorted to wearing garbage bags because they're not getting the right supplies and the right gear. I know I'm furious. I think most Americans are furious. This seems like a referendum on many things, but especially the preparedness we have for crises like this. Um, what do you think went wrong, and what do you think we can all do just as average Americans watching this in horror to help? I, I think until you've experienced a pandemic like this, uh, you always discount it. Um, with, without getting into, into politics, in the last administration, when we had the H1N1 virus, we used up, a, a, I think, an amazing number of masks, and they instructed, and they were told, you really need to go out and buy a bunch of masks. Uh, they didn't do it, so the stockpile wasn't rebuilt. In this administration, I think they didn't they didn't really mobilize the first couple of weeks. I, I do a podcast every Sunday, and, and uh, we had uh, Dr. Fauci on in early February. He knew things were not going right. He knew that, that this thing coming out of China was dangerous. Nobody knew yet how dangerous it was going to be. And so they were sort of caught between, do we treat this like a big flu or do we treat this like a pandemic? And I think that it just took a little while. And I don't think that the planning system at any level, this is not just uh, the, the White House, but I think the whole planning system underestimated the scale of the conflict uh, and, and how much resources it was going to take. And it's, I find it very awkward, uh, for example, that the Chinese are now uh, bringing masks to and, and, and ventilators to Spain uh, because the Chinese really ramped up their production once they understood how bad this was. Uh, but but we should be doing that. We, we should be, uh, if, if you will, uh, the medicine chest of the world, just as we were once the arsenal of the world. And and, and I think that's going to require us to rethink some things. We, we allowed much too stuff, much too much stuff went to China. I think 80% of some pharmaceuticals are made in China. Um, we don't. We don't have. We've been. We've been importing from Italy, by the way. A lot of the the testing devices that you put up your nose, uh, they happen to be made here in Italy. And the Air Force has actually been flying them because there aren't enough commercial flights right now uh, to get them to the U.S. rapidly. But the supply chain, I think, is probably about six weeks behind where you'd like it to be, and they are moving and they're they're playing catch up. But there's no question, uh, even though we have, I think it's a 90-something page document mm -hmm. at the National Security Council that had been written about how do you deal with the pandemic, uh, we didn't follow our own advice and we didn't move uh, at the speed we could have. Well, I hope in the next six weeks we will have totally caught up. But I think doctors have every right to be worried. Speaker. Um, there, are, there, are prob there are challenges um, with this particular virus that makes it very dangerous for doctors. Speaker. Uh, because the masks don't necessarily screen out the particles if they, if they dry out. Speaker, they this is much smaller. Speaker, this is Sonny. You know, we, as we mentioned last night, the Senate did, though, unanimously pass this $2 trillion stimulus bill uh, that I think will be quite helpful to, to many American families. But several Republican senators are worried unemployment benefits will be so enticing that people will stop working. Senator Graham even implied that the benefits would incentivize well-trained nurses to stay home and collect a check. Do you share their concerns? Sure, I mean, as a practical matter, you have to, I, as I understand it, there's one part of this where you actually can make more money not working. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, that's not a very good incentive. That, and, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I was so very much for the bill. I think when, when you have a problem on this scale, uh, you're going to have some things that aren't quite right that you may want to go back and fix later. But they did the right thing to pass it. They did the right thing to pass it, you know, 96 to 0. I hope the House is going to pass it by unanimous consent tomorrow or by voice vote tomorrow. Uh, get it to the president. I hope he'll sign it uh, tomorrow night or Saturday morning. Uh, because the country needs to have a feel that we are, we as a country can move, that we can get things done. This is the third bill in a row they passed now in about four, three weeks or four weeks, which is a good sign. It, and I think we have to take a deep breath, evaluate Liz all Graham this, should be ashamed and come of back. I think you'll have two more major bills between now and the end of the year. It just seems as, as we learn what doesn't work and what has to be fixed. It just seems to me the suggestion that nurses who are on the front line 
uh, are not I'm, going to work and sacrifice uh, the way that they have because they're going to be making a few <laughs> hundred dollars more um, is, is ludicrous. But that's just my opinion. It's insulting. Yeah, I, it's I think insulting. so. It's insulting. Lindsey Graham should be ashamed of himself to say something like that and in the middle of all of this.